So actually for what I want to do, I don't want to abstract my step sequencer patch. I in fact want to have access to the step sequencer or these live.matrix objects and um, be able to actively sequence any rhythms that I want. So I'll be copy pasting just this matrix with the iter and select objects and my metronome into my main patch. And I can go ahead and delete my step sequencer abstraction because I decided to have that um, UI of my step sequencer visible in my main patch. But now what we are left with is the output of our selects which essentially should be routed to a place to play bass drum and um, snare drum, clap, and then close hat and open hi hat. And we created separate patches, separate synthesis patches for our bass drum and snare drum, but not for our claps and uh, close and open hi hats. So for those three, we'll be using the samples in a playlist object. But now I can attach my bass drum output which is if the input matches one, to this bass drum synthesis patch. The second output, which matches number two, could be sent to my snare drum synthesis. And then we'll talk about the fact that we'll just have this synth rise with only a few of controls inside of our main patch. So now you might be wondering, well, how do we connect this bass drum or snare drum to our select object? I don't see any inputs or, out of, or outputs out of this object. Well, that's because we need to create those inputs and outputs, which are actually called inlets and outlets inside of our abstraction before we can connect it to anything else in our uh, main patch. In order to do that, well, you need to lock your main patch so you're able to double click on your abstraction. And here we see the drum synthesis patch that I had. Now you'll see that instead of a uh, lock and unlock mode, we also have this editing icon. You have to click on that first and then unlock your patch. So how do we know where to create an inlet? We have to figure out what type of data needs to be sent into this patch in order for it to activate or work. Well, I have this giant button here, and that's how I used to trigger my uh, bass drum sound to work. I'll demonstrate it here. So now you can see that if I have already set my initial pitch, all I need to do is to click on this button to make this patch work. So in the simplest forms, I just need an inlet into this button so we can send a bang to this button and activate everything else. Now we can choose to have multiple inlets if we want to be able to change some of the other parameters from outside of this patch. For example, the initial uh, pitch might be something that we're interested in. And of course we could choose to change the curve. <laughs> So maybe at most all we need is an inlet for our button, an inlet for our initial pitch and, our, and an inlet for our curve. So let's do that. Unlock the patch, new object and type in inlet and connect the output of the inlet to the input of your button. Next in order going from left to right would be our curve number. So again, inlet hit enter and you can see that automatically the number two is associated with this inlet and that means that once we save and close this patch our first input will be the input that goes into our button and a second input would be the input that goes into this number box and let's create a third one and attach this to our initial pitch so i know that the first one just receives a bang and then the next two inlets i need to set in a number while we're at it, let's also create our outlets. What needs to be sent out of this patch? Well, ideally, I want to be able to control the volume 
of this patch on it without having to open up this abstraction. So I will have this gain control and our easy deck in our main patch. And what I really need is the output of my filter because that's the last stage before it feeds into my gain control. So I'll delete the cord, the audio cord for here, and I'll create an outlet and connect the output of my filter to the input of the outlet. When you try to close this patch, it asks you if you want to save this. Yes, we do. We want to save all the changes that we made. All right, now here we are back at our main patch. And you can see that now our bass drum synthesis patch has three inputs and one output. So let's see where we can put this. Of course, our first output of the select is going to be responsible for our bass drum and select output a bang. So we'll just send it to our first input, which wants to receive a bang to activate that button. Now the next two, we can make a number box for it. The first one is our curve number and it was in decimal, so we need a float box. So let's hit F to create a float box. The third output was responsible for the initial frequency. This one can just be an integer, so hit I for that. And our output, well, we need an easy DAC object with our gain control. And we can just connect the output of this abstraction into our gain control. Now let's turn the volume on, set a curve number, set an initial frequency, and let's sequence some kick. going to do the same thing for our snare drum synthesis patch. Again, unlock it. I know that I need one inlet that just sends a bang to this main button that activates everything. Okay, so for the snare one, I don't want to really bring too many of these number boxes into my main patch. So I just want my uh, main button and I want to set everything to a certain volume and not have to worry about it later. So what we can do is create set messages. Do set 140, set 300 for my main frequency. So for my gain levels, I found out that set 100 works. Now we're not done yet because if we do this, we still have to click on all of these set messages to make sure that they're set. But I want to make sure that all of these set messages activate once I open my main patch. And I'm going to create this object called load mess. Load mess sends a message when a patch is loaded. So I'm going to send the message of bang and I will send this to all of my set messages that I've made. Because I want to make sure that all of these set messages are activated when my main patcher is loaded. And now let's just create our output. So I can see that I have this noise, the snap, and my snare body and tone all going to easy DAX. And I, I want a sum of all of these signals in my main patch, and I'll just attach a main uh, gain control to all of them. So for that, I will delete these easy DAC objects and replace them with an outlet. Now, if I wanted to have separate gain control over um, all of these different ones, uh, all of these different aspects of my snare, then I will create, then I would have created three separate outlets. But again, we're just trying to keep it simple. And I've already made these set messages um, for all of these individual sounds. I'll just send all of these outputs into one outlet. And again, we'll close this patch, we'll save it. And now our, drum our snare drum synthesis patch has one input and one output, which we can move to our second component. Again, we don't have any separate number boxes, we just set everything, but we can create a separate gain control for it. And that way we can control the volume of our bass drum separately from the volume of our snare drum. 